The scariest advice given to me as a beginning writer was to write what I knew. Write what I knew? This was when I was at the university, and the only way anyone took me seriously was if they didn't know where I was from. As soon as most people heard my accent, a certain glaze came over their eyes as if they had instantly decided nothing I could say would be worth listening to. My protective coloration, I learned, was to keep my mouth shut. Don't get me wrong, I loved my family, I loved my childhood playing in the woods, the sense of individual identity I got growing up in what was back then the poorest, least populated county and the most hated and certainly one of the poorest states in the nation. In a county where only 10,000 people lived, there were no doctors, no movie theaters, no four-lane highways, no grocery stores, except the small country stores where the owner knew you by name and put your money in the cash register himself. As a child, I knew where every one of my relatives was buried, which cemetery, which row, even the ones without markers, on both sides of my family. I knew where the old pioneer roads had been, and then the first major roads, and then the farm to market roads, and of course, all the good dirt roads where you could take a fast horse and let him race as hard as he wanted. I knew how and when to fish for crappie in Swamp Creek, where to gather yellow root for mouth ulcers. I knew where the bush honeysuckle bloomed in the spring and where to gather pine cones the size of footballs for Christmas. But in this rural, sparsely populated county, three out of every five households did not own an automobile which probably didn't make much difference in those families' lives since they were too poor to go to the doctor anyway when they were sick, too poor to buy groceries they couldn't grow. By age 10, I had heard a hog scream out his death in the morning, helped butcher the meat by day, and eaten his ribs by nightfall. When I filled out application forms that asked for my city of birth, I didn't have one. I wasn't born in any city limits. I wasn't born in a hospital. I spent over 20 years writing the stories in undeniable truths. Some of them are stories about the accents I grew up with, and some of the stories are about other accents I've heard throughout the years. In one story, Hank Williams takes on the role of Jesus in the 21st chapter of John. In another, a ghost tells the story of the rescue of a dog that has fallen through the ice in a winter pond. A few of them are stories I have lived, but all of them are about people who talk in accents.